that, that some of it's a little impromptu as mm -hmm. far as picking up the slack. That's real life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're athletes. I'm Justin. I'm in charge of some of the project management and communicating with different schools in the area. I'm Ben. I'm in charge of the financials and project management. I'm Jack. I'm in charge of project management. And I'm Brad, and I'm in charge of marketing. And Phil's not here today. <laughs> All right, so earlier this year, one Sunday, uh, my team had a really important get lacrosse game. We are playing uh, one of the best teams in the nation, by far our toughest opponent. We'd really been preparing for months and really all year for this, and this is really like the culmination, like the high point of our season. So probably the day before Saturday, that was our biggest practice of the year. It was definitely the most important as far as how productive we needed to be and what we needed to get done. Initially, it was scheduled to be Saturday afternoon. At the last minute Friday night, our coach changed it to Saturday morning, and I unfortunately did not get that message due to a communication gap between me and my coach. Consequently, I had, to, um, I had to sit out the game and I had to run a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody likes to run. Aside from running, there were two other, there's two other problems we're trying to solve with our product. The first one being communication problems with our coaches, as I will have talked about a little before, just between coaches and athletes alike, whether that be a coaching staff communicating with one another or athletes communicating with one another or coaches and athletes communicating within like, their team. And then the last being athletes lacking motivation to, for, to uh, compete with each other outside of practice and to get better off of the field. So before we go into our solution, as you know, we used to have a ball element to our product, but we ditched the ball because it, would, <laughs> it was not worth the time and effort that it would take to develop, and it pigeonholed us into a smaller market. So the new, the new solution we came up with is a communication, an innovative communication tool for college colleges and their athletes, the, college, the coaches can, um, they can set like challenges for their athletes, make sure the, the athletes do them and communicate with the teamwork between the two and, and see who like does it best so there's actually a like, competition within the team. And then the athletes would be rewarded for their hard work outside of practice and on the field and, to, and also with communication with the teammates. So for competitors, we have four main competitors. And after surveying all the coaches in the areas around us, we uh, found that these three, all the team, uh, the competitors with the name team of them, they haven't even heard of them or they haven't used them. And some of them actually use Huddle. But for the three that I just talked about, they're more geared towards a younger audience that the parent can go on and set like who's bringing the like apple juice or something. <laughs> and then, uh, and then for huddle, it's uh, it's geared more like for colleges, so they could recruit young athletes, and as well as the kids can go see uh, how they're like playing, and uh, re like fix some errors. And we're targeting more of the high school athlete that's independent, and that's uh, like their parents aren't really helping them out anymore. So as we just talked about, we have a relatively saturated marketplace. So, and there's two ways we want to separate ourselves from the competition. The first one being our competition aspect of our uh, product. We, uh, our product is going to have a feature that lets coaches post challenges to their team, and then we'll have a feature where the team, uh, the players can compete the challenge and mark it as done. And uh, in re as a reward for doing this, they can earn virtual, we're calling them stamps right now, but really they act as like kind of virtual puzzle pieces. So the coaches will set like a predetermined goal that they want all their players to hit. And as the players complete more challenges and gain more stamps, they'll kind of form to like almost form a puzzle to show the players and coaches alike how far the players are in completing the goal and where they are like relative to where their coaches want them to be. The second factor is communication. Um, we really want to streamline communication between coaches and players. So like I talked about earlier, no one has to miss practice, no players have to run. And so coaches and players can communicate easier and more efficiently. So for customer segments, so we'd be marketing the three main uh, target markets or customer segments, and that would be schools, coaches, and players. And our top priority is like the entire school, because once they, like if uh, uh, 
also administrative director, is it? Athletic Ath director. Athletic director. Athletic director. Uh, he would buy it for all the programs underneath, and they would, um, for a lower price, and that would give us a bigger customer base and more exposure to other schools. So for our pricing, we would price at $6.50 a month, and then we would lock teams into yearly contracts to encourage its use during the off season. Uh, and then we would be making our money through those team subscriptions, and then we would also be putting ads in our application and earning revenue through that stream. All right, so this is a screenshot from a prototype of our app that we made. This is, uh, as you can see, the challenges page. Uh, this shows the current challenges that coaches have posted and players are able to, uh, to complete. It shows the rewards, so what the players can earn for completing these challenges. And it shows this, their stamps, uh, so how close they are to completing uh, the goals that their coaches have set for them, and how close they are to earning rewards. But you can see this is a really easy to use interface, so it's really easy for players and coaches to access it. Uh, this is the chat page. This is just uh, what we envisioned it might look like. As you can see at the top, it's the general team chat. So this is a whole team communicating with one another. And in this, as you can see, they have the ability to quickly message within one another, talk about the app, the team, whatever they please. This is a, an example of the team page. As you can see, there's the calendar, so the coaches are able to easily post when practice is, where it is, what the team has going on each day, so the players know ahead of time uh, what's going on, so they can easily access it as well. Uh, under members, teams will be able to view like their fellow team members. They'll be able to see their contact information, a little information about them as players, maybe like their number, their statistics. And then the last one is polls. Uh, this is going to allow players and coaches to post polls, and then obviously players and coaches to respond to them. And this is just another way that we want to make communication really easy, kind of separating it so players, so uh, things don't kind of get lost in the big chat. So for our TAM. We found that there were 22,000 high schools in the USA, not to mention all the high schools overseas. Then we assumed there would be about 30 sports teams for high school. GBN has 30 varsity sports alone, along with all the lower level teams. So for every school like GBN in the nation, there's always smaller schools. So we figured a little lesser number than GBN, and then we'd be charging $6.50 a month, and our TAM would come out to $51.5 million a year. Then for our SAM, we found that there were about 1,500 high schools in Illinois. Then we assumed the same number of sports teams and the same price, and our SAM would come out to $3.5 million per year. So when we came up with the solution, we wanted to validate it. So we started emailing schools in the area and trying to tackle those 1,500 in Illinois. These are some of the schools directly in the area that we emailed. We emailed the athletic directors and the coaches basically saying a short little pitch about it, and then we gave them a link to a survey that they could fill out to, so we could get direct knowledge, because obviously they wouldn't like all, all respond to our email. Um, we emailed over probably over like 200 different schools and coaches and stuff like that, and we did not uh, get as many responses as we hoped. So we got 10 responses. Um, one of the questions that we'd ask is what they disliked about their current solution. As you can see, some of the examples would be too many different apps. Um, there's only one system. I have to make it work. It takes time. Kids don't really care in creating email lists. So it's just basically disorganized. Another question we'd asked is, would you be interested in using an application to connect your team and motivate players to perform better through rewards? And obviously, every athletic director and coach would love to hear this. So 70% said yes, 30% said no. Would you pay? 70% um, said no, 30% said yes. Would you try the solution out for free for a year? Basically give me another option. And they said they would all will. So then for financials, for SG&A, we decided that we would do $100 of marketing per month, thereabout, and we would mostly concentrate on social media marketing. Um, and then we have domain and web hosting, about $30 for our website. Um, and then we have a cost of $1,000 per month in app maintenance. We 
online we found a developer source that said that at maintenance per year would be about one fifth of the cost of the app to build. So at first we would not have this cost because we'd use a web-based platform at first and not build out the app while we start, but eventually we would have a cost such as that. And then at first we would also have no cost of goods sold. Uh, for our startup costs, um, we would use $600 towards an LLC, then $280 towards a trademark, and that would be part of our initial $5,000 investment. And then um, we would also need about use about $60,000 towards the website. Then for scaling, um, we would hire sales reps as we started to grow to help expand our network of schools. And obviously if we have more people selling, then we could sell more than just if we went out to schools and sold. And if someone did it full time, then they would be able to spend more time and build us, and build the sales network more than we would be able to. Um, and then we would use private investments, such as private investors or friends and family to help us get the startup cost of the application being built. But in the meantime, we would use that web-based platform that would be much cheaper to build. So then for our financial projections, um, in year one, we assumed that we'd be able to sell to about 150 teams based on GBN having about 90 teams. And then, so we would be able to sell to between one and two schools um, and that would have us making $36,000 in profit. So then by year two, we would be able to pay off our development costs. And by year five, with the growth and help of sales reps to build up the growth rate of our product, we would be making close to $4.2 million in year five. So for marketing, like Justin said, we uh, sent out a lot of emails to coaches in the area around us, and that wasn't really working out. So we started contacting them in person uh, for coaches and athletic directors, and then as well as the social media. We have, we have a page on every platform. So then for a funding request. Uh, as you know, we're requesting $5,000. And then, as we said earlier, we would be using the 200, about $300 for a trademark, and then $600 for an LLC. And then we would, be, we would use the remaining money to help build a web-based platform to start our product out without it actually, actually having to build out the application. And then our pre-money valuation comes out to just under $2.3 Do you guys have any questions? Could you guys go back to your financial page, the uh, five-year model? Mm -hmm. So you had said in year one that as soon as how many schools had you sold to? Uh, that's between oh. one and two. So we're looking to get around 150 teams there. Uh, GBN has 90 teams. So really, if we just sold to GBN and then maybe one other school, we feel like we could easily hit that mark. And then what, at what point, if you get to year two or three or four, your philosophy is kind of focus on the Illinois schools first, right? There's mm -hmm. 1,500 of them, right? And then yeah. there's 22,000. At what point on the on your five-year thing does it, do you get outside of the state of Illinois? sales guys um, is that is this all Illinois kind of for the first five years or no we feel like for a year one and two we're gonna mainly focus in Illinois and then as okay. we begin you as we begin to uh, scale more and hire more sales reps then we can branch out out of the state so year three or yeah like I, that. yeah that's what we put in our um, three-year forecast the year three is around when we want to try to leave the state once we establish our brand yeah I mean first of all I think the personal story at the beginning was really